Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. Today I kind of want to talk about some advice that I wish I knew when I first started as a software engineer. So to start off, the first advice I have is definitely negotiate your salary. So when I first started as a software engineer and coming out of college, it was actually very scary to negotiate. And at the time, I definitely tried. But without prior experiences, I didn't know where to start or what's a good number. So I wasn't using a lot of information. I was pretty much just talking about the other offers that I have. And definitely the number one rule that I remember vividly is never tell them your other offers, what the numbers are, or never tell them your existing salary. A lot of times they ask you, what's your current salary? It may seem like, oh, it doesn't mean anything harm. It, they're just asking. But a lot of time it's because they just want to, you know, use that as a reference point and potentially just give you a 20% increase. So definitely don't give them that number. So definitely be careful when they ask you about these numbers. Another thing that you can keep in mind is a lot of times they also ask you, hey, what's your salary expectation? What's like your range before the interview even starts? And a lot of times what I do nowadays is hey, like I'm sure when we get to that point, we can reach something that we mutually agree on. I would say like trying to defer the answer, trying to not give a number because that number could be too high and could be too low, definitely can hurt you during your interview process. So I would say definitely try to keep that at the end. And now that I have worked for a while, I also realized there are a lot of tools out there that shows you what's like a typical salary that you can expect for a certain level at a certain company, especially if it's one of the bigger tech company. For example, you can look up this information on level.fii or even team blind, where you can ask a lot of these questions and then see if your package makes a lot of sense. So this can give you a very good starting point of like what you can kind of expect and heading into an interview, you kind of already know what the range will be like. So if you're looking for something really, really high and you already see that this company won't be paying that much, then maybe it makes sense for you to, you know, skip it if you really care about the salary. And ever since I started my career, I also have been interviewing a ton. And I also been through a lot of negotiation cycles. And here are some advice that I have. I think for a lot of companies, negotiating base salary is one of the hardest thing. But definitely start with the base salary because the other things that I'm gonna mention is a lot easier for companies to negotiate because base salary is something that it's consistent. So you definitely want to make sure you negotiate your base salary really, really well because over the years, like that's the one that you're gonna increase. Like if it's either going to be the inflation adjustment or the raise. So if you start with a too low of a base salary, it's really hard for you to catch up. And after negotiating the base salary, normally what I do is to either negotiate the stock option or the stock that they are giving you. And that's something that they are more lenient a lot of times and more willing to give it to you, especially if you are one of those like more senior level roles. And as an entry level, like, you know, the number can vary a lot as well. So definitely keep that in mind. Level the FII doesn't really capture that really well because like, you know, it's more aggregated. Like it doesn't really reflect, oh, what are you actually getting as your package? So I would recommend a lot of this information can be fine on blind. So you can search up the company, the level, and then see what's a typical package. And that's where you can find a lot of the stock information. And the last thing, but not least, is to negotiate the bonus. There are two aspects that I tackle. The first thing is to negotiate a sign-on bonus alone. You can say things like, hey, you are giving up on your invested stock if you have any. You are giving up on your end of the year bonus if you haven't received that as well. And there's other stuff that you can consider as well. Like, hey, like I have a sign up bonus from my previous company that I had to pay back because I'm leaving before it's completely finished of such. So those are some ways that you can negotiate. So negotiating a sign up bonus. And after that, ask about relocation bonus. Like if they offer any relocation assistance, if you have to relocate. So definitely keep that in mind. And moving on to my second advice. I think a lot of times that, yeah, if you really care about your salary, your total compensation, the sad truth is that sure, like, you know, staying at your company, you get these good multipliers, like, you know, you potentially get promoted a lot faster, but you still don't get as much of an increase as someone who got hired for the next level, who are external hire. Unfortunately, that's the sad truth for a lot of these companies. So I would say, sure, like you might like your company a lot, you might like your team a lot, but it's also okay to switch jobs and maybe that will brighten up your technical skills and help you become more valuable because your resume will look more pretty, like you have more experiences, not just at the same company, but also different companies. Because from my experience, 
different companies do have different focus on how the text board built and that will bring you new perspective new skill set that can make you more valuable so from what i have seen like discussing with a lot of colleagues or even checking team blinds the fact that a lot of time unfortunately like if you work at the company for a long long time and doing such an amazing job until you hit that staff or senior staff level roles like your salary really is kind of lagging behind the people that they externally hire at that next level or the same level as you who did really well on the interview and the second part of this is sure like you might switch job to get that salary boost and it's okay if you consider to go back to your company Technically, this is called a boomerang in the tech industry. It's something that maybe you don't hear often. It's the fact that you leave your current company to get that additional salary boost, and then you switch back to your company either via interview where you can get that new salary and negotiate a new package. Or a lot of times, for example, if you leave Google within a year, you don't have to interview again if you come back. So this gives you flexibility to even pick a new team if you reach out to the recruiter. And of course, these require you to be doing a good job at your current role. So that's something that definitely you wanna keep in mind. And the third thing that I wanna talk about is something that I have learned so far, seeing what's happening around. It's the fact that tech used to be a very stable job, like the pay is consistent, like it seems so stable. But a lot of times nowadays, it seems like you can get laid off, you can get fired when the economy is not so well. So now is actually the time to consider maybe it's time to invest in yourself a little bit more, either by picking up a new technical skills or you know work on personal projects, something that you can showcase that can prepare you for the future if you do have to switch. It's something that's on top of your job. And of course, a lot of times you can also work for those long contracting roles or look for like a side hustle where you are building a boot or bootstrapping a website or mobile app depending on what your skill expertise and then provide that skeletons for a lot of companies who are willing to pay you some money i would say like diversifying your skill set diversifying your portfolio like it seems to be way more important nowadays like having one stream of income doesn't feel like it's enough anymore so i would say highly recommend investing yourself and look for ways to diversify your skill sets and last but not least is to take advantage of your company benefits. Many companies offer a wide variety of benefits, and now I think a lot of times like it's underutilized. For example, you get amount of sick days like that can be used for mental health as well, and then you get choice days or flexibility days that you can use before committing into your PTOs. I think definitely take advantage of those days and those options. Because a lot of time what happens like, oh, you're too focused on the project, you're thinking about getting to the next level, you're thinking about going for the promotion, but you are your biggest asset. Like you try, you have to make sure to not get burned out. And a lot of these benefits are here to help you make sure you don't get burned out. So I would say, I remember vividly, like when I first started my job, like I was scared, I was afraid to take a sick day even when I'm not feeling so well because I wanna perform and you know, at the end of the day, like you are way more important. A company is just a company and your health is very important. So definitely take advantage of the benefits such as sick leave and you can use it for mental health as well. Like and try to make sure to stay on top of yourself. And a lot of times these are the days that even if you leave the company or get fired or get laid off, like they won't pay you for the number of sick days or number of flexible days. Yeah, guys, I think these are some things that I really took to heart and I really wish I knew when I first started my tech career. So yeah, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you guys think and I will talk to you guys next.